And this is how it starts. A species raised from the dust, intent from the beginning on defining, separating us. We turned first to the earth, painting beasts on rocks and caves, those creatures we killed so that we might survive. We settled down, learned how to bring life from the ground, but sedentary life begat society and we began to stratify. We enslaved our sisters and our brothers in the name of greed, broke their backs building monuments to our own greatness. Things changed, machines came. We began to call ourselves enlightened, celebrated our abandonment of God, of tradition, and rested on science and reason to be the beacon of hope. But that narrative is based in the false idea that history equals improvement. The reality of the human story is a zero-sum game where the losers pay with their lives and the winners are chained to a new idol. Progress. We've been caught up in the same cycle we thought we'd been freed from. We plunge forward, rejecting the good and the bad, and leaving ruin in our wake. We see what we've done, we panic, we relish in our nostalgia lovesick over the way things used to be in awe of our own achievement. We try to halt destruction but forget that there is work to be done. There has to be a better way. Something's gotta give. Life is fragile. Life is short but that's okay cause each and every day there's a new way that we can make a real change. Life is fragile, life is short, it's a race to the finish line that we can't find but hold deep in our mind. So don't let go of things old and don't forget the things new because this wasted race may bring destruction on us all so stand tall and fight, fight for what you believe, fight for what you are and what you could be. Because the further we progress, the more we regress because this process is not equal to success. So stand strong against the grain because our world is moving towards destruction and we might be too late. Humanity is running its course and there's nothing we can do because all empires must fall and this reign is no exception to the law. We lost the world the moment we lost our way and now we're stranded in the fray trying not to stray but we keep losing each and every day. This is the end. So wake up and see the signs because there may not be a next time this time. The earth is becoming too small for us. In the last 200 years the growth has become exponential, that is, the population grows by the same percentage each year. Currently the rate is about 1.9% a year. This may not sound very much, but it means that the world population doubles every 40 years. I will celebrate my 80th birthday in 2022, and in my lifetime, the world's population has quadrupled. This exponential growth cannot continue into the next millennium. By the year 2600, the world's population would be standing shoulder to shoulder, and the electricity consumption would make the earth glow red hot. This is untenable. The human mind is innately inclined to find the optimistic side of all things in life. In a world occupied with death and destruction and missing pieces, we find a rebirth of what didn't die, a culture. 
a revolution, a redefined line of where peace is. We're taught that music and painting and writing are a waste of our time, that I'm in a state of mind to find something more, something worth living for. We're told you can't live life as an artist, but what is life if not a work of art or a canvas that if we aren't careful, could burn at any instant? Are scientists and science fiction novelists that different? Stitches in your arm from that time when you were nine and fell off the monkey bars are the delicate design of a doctor. Your attorney is an actor and he scripts his defense in your story for the jury. Does that make sense? The greatest artists are chock full of depression, have faced every form of oppression. You can say it's a digression, but when has any masterpiece come from anything less than catastrophe? They say there's no mistakes in art, and this may be true, but things often don't go the way we planned and we're tempted to start over, but we keep playing, keep painting, keep writing, and then we find ourselves in a state of progression. Society cannot function if we focus solely on the beauty that we fantasize about creating. To develop, we need not only optimistic beauty, but the harsh reality of destruction. We don't destroy the world for destruction's sake, and we don't create beauty for beauty's sake. The human race creates because of necessity, because of desire. The liberation from this never-ending cycle of impetuous creation and destruction is the true balance humans fantasize, the peace we believe to be achieving. But our priorities are so out of order that this balance can only be achieved if we change the way we think of ourselves as individuals. We must stop focusing on what benefits ourselves and focus on what can improve the lives of society as a whole.